we'll get going. Uh, thank you, those who came. It's a pleasure to be uh, presenting here. Uh, I'm very thankful to the uh, imperial people who selected my uh, French language blended class uh, for the Atlas Award this year. And um, I have a few other people I'd like to thank uh, because uh, teaching in a big university is always uh, a thing we do with lots of support. So the e-learning technology team at the University of Western, the Center for Teaching and Learning, the Technology Services, uh, my home department of French, the Faculty of Education at Western, and specifically the online French Master's in Pedagogy program, uh, which I'm part of, and of course my students, who are my guinea pigs most of the time. And if I'm being adventurous with the tools you provide me with, uh, they pay the first price <laughs> quite often. So my students. Today, uh, I, I, I didn't know who I would be talking to. And uh, I thought there would be more IT people and less faculty people. So I tried to build uh, a talk that would help you guys come home with a new case study, let's say, that you can keep in mind uh, knowing that your tools can go and do that. Uh, maybe I'll surprise you by how messy it is. And th the mess will start uh, right here because uh, as a starter, I'd like us to listen to a little video that was taken uh, at the Aperio in 2017. So just an excerpt is the question uh, period, so I don't know who will be talking, who, who's the person, but it's on the website. So. Mm, we should have the sound. It is not coming. Are you able to help me with sound? in their teaching that it takes in order to use a lot of uh, educational technology tools well there is an upfront investment of time faculty don't by and large want to so apparently it's coming from the TV it doesn't respect the setting we had so should I try and fix that from this computer sir I'm showing you all my, all my slides ahead of time. Uh, did anyone hear anything exciting, interesting, unexpected? What? You feel free to raise your hand. Uh, uh, working at large recently. Okay. Oh. Got to move back to this one. Uh, did anyone hear anything Thank you. exciting, interesting, unexpected? What? You feel free to raise your hand. Uh, uh, working at large research institutions, our challenge is to get faculty to invest the time in their teaching that it takes in order to use a lot of uh, educational technology tools. Well, there is an upfront investment of time. Faculty don't by and large want to make that investment. You'll always find a small group with whom you can uh, conduct really sophisticated projects, but scaling is the huge challenge for, uh, for us. That's sort of like uh, the speed of light being a constant in the universe. That's a constant to it. OK. So I think you understand this point of view. Will you be surprised to hear that it's not mine? Uh, I do not make a new course uh, at university to use tools, <laughs> of course. So I'll ask you to uh, try and uh, use my shoes for uh, the next half hour and see it from my point of view. So I will be explaining 
Uh, where I come from, so uh, the uh, purple part there around the treasure chest, will be many things that I've gathered in many, through many years that uh, were in my head when I was told, please build a course about speaking text. And the second part up there will be uh, the course itself. I'll tell you about it. Okay, so where do I come from? Well, the first idea uh, for this course came out of a meeting where I was not present. Uh, and professors at the Department of French uh, wanted to revamp their third year offering. And someone said, oh, we should have a course that will be reading text. And uh, someone said, oh, sure, we'll do writing text. And someone else said, we'll do speaking text. And that was just a slogan. It, it's not something that actually exists, right? Uh, and it came from my colleague. Uh, his name is Mario Longtin. And he's uh, the professor who teaches theater in my department. And he puts on lots of plays. And of course, he has that in mind, the, the text and the speaking. Uh, this looks like it's fundamental in, in French studies, right, uh, to do text and speak the text and, and voice it. Uh, it's not all that obvious today. But it has deep roots. Mario comes from the same uh, part of town I do. And uh, we share the same culture. M my education was made by, uh, by Jesuits. And these people, since always, have put their pupil in front of the class, either for uh, a play for a poem, uh, for a, a joust. You know, you, you would learn Latin, and you would divide a class in two teams, and it would be something like a reach for the top. And they've been doing that since the 1700s. Uh, so that was very much part of my culture. So schools play in bringing people up front. Now, today, in second language pedagogy, uh, that's not how it works. People care more about real-life content, real-life experience, communication that looks like people do in daily lives. Therefore, uh, teaching how to order a pizza and uh, find your way as you travel through France, right? Well, I wanted to explain that starting from text and, and literary text may not be a taboo. There was a tradition behind it, but today, uh, publishing l'oralité seconde comme principe de didactique du français oral, using references that are uh, like uh, Walter Ong, uh, the Jesuit from uh, University of Chicago, who uh, invented this concept of a secondary orality, that was quite adventurous. Uh, it was hard for me to pass this article because people don't want to hear about the link between literature and second language teaching uh, today. It's not trendy. So uh, for me, it's very deep rooted. I uh, did my PhD in uh, what's called phonostylistics. And basically, uh, it got published. Uh, this one research was about Cyrano de Bergerac, so the play that was uh, in black and white when you got in the room. Uh, they were all musketeers, right? And I had four of these actors, uh, two French from France, uh, Belmondo and Depardieu, and two from Quebec, Lebeau and Nadon, on, uh, on video. And I was comparing how they say the same line. And after two hours of text, you end up with very different character. So just to show you, I'll take the uh, English text of the very end of the play. It's an important moment. So Cyrano de Bergerac has been agonizing for uh, about 30 minutes at this point, And he's going to, to die at the last line. And in his agony, he's talking to enemies that, that are not actually present. Who's present is Roxane, uh, his beloved Roxane. And he's saying these things. He's, he's talking to his, to his enemies. And he says, you strip me the laurel and the rose. 
Take all. Despite you, there is yet one thing I hold against you all. And when, tonight, I enter Christ's fair courts and, lowly bowed, sweep with doffed casket the heaven's threshold blue, one thing is left that, void of stain or smudge, I bear away despite you. And Roxanne must say it is, and Cyrano must say, my panache. Now, this is a French word that uh, people picked there. The play uh, got translated right away within a year. It was a huge success in New York City, in London. It got translated in Italian. And the word panache from the French language got inserted in the mainstream dictionaries of those two other languages right away. It's, it's swagger, it's verve, it's uh, uh, courage. It's a mix of all of that, right? So I have these four uh, actors who, who have to say this word. And it's very important. If, if a new actor has to say Cyrano, he, he knows that the last word is the most important. So, you know, Jean-Paul Belmondo, the French actor, who you, you may not know, He's some sort of Tom Cruise. He does his um, stunts himself. Well, used to. He's older now. Very manly, right, type of, of actor. Uh, very strong and powerful. And actually, the play I used, he made in, in Paris in a downtown theater that he owns. So, he, you know, he's in power. So how does that go, right? Et ce soir, mon palu saluera le seuil bleu. Roxane, essay. And you have Belmondo, who's about to die, but then, and he's got a sword in his hand. He says, Mon panache! <laughs> and then, uh, there are violence starting. So he doesn't want to die. He's a hero who won't die. The last bit of the play is the acme of the curve of him jumping with the sword upwards. And now I have a French Canadian actor, more like an, an intellectual. And his way of, of dying was uh, mon panache. <laughs> and I interviewed this actor. That's Guinadon. And Guinadon told me that his character uh, was uh, saddened and uh, angry at that panache. That was a burden on his shoulder for his whole life or his whole play. <laughs> and. Uh, he, he was happy, sad to, to let go. There was a mixed feeling. It was very complex. And you see that he was designing a very deep Cyrano character there. It was very interesting. So in my treasure cove, I put this kind of high level commenting on, on performance, right? I care for that. I'll listen to people at the next level. And everyone who speaks, speaks with their own body. Even if it's second language, there's a whole person there. So I'll listen. Now, I also worked uh, for a few years with the military in, in Canada. So we have the Royal Military College, which is Canada's West Point, more or less. Actually, uh, they do compete against West Point uh, yearly. Sometimes you win, sometimes we do. Uh, and of course, the military have money. So they have to teach online a, a huge program. It's called Allié Web. And uh, it was uh, designed using a tool book. And uh, what I was doing is uh, working on their tickets. They had accumulated uh, a zillion tickets. And also helping with the redesign of the next generation of it. Uh, and I'd like to show you how sophisticated were these things, because I had uh, my hands on those uh, very deeply. So this is one template. We had about 70 templates. Hello. So here we are in Allié Web. And I'll bring you to an activity that uses oral input. So this is one of those activities. If I click on instructions here, I get uh, the the text of the instruction, and I, I can also have the audio. Activity linguistic. Consultez la grammaire et répondez négativement aux questions. 
Exemple. Question. Quand tu étais jeune, jouais-tu au football, au soccer? Réponse possible. Non, je ne jouais ni au football, ni au soccer. Non, je ne jouais pas au football, ni au soccer. So, here they gave me the instructions, and now I know what to do. So I can close that. So here I have a grammar item that corresponds to what is being taught here. Ne pas ni ni. So this is page 174 of our grammar book, and I can access that. If I get back here, now I have uh, already done the first one, so it's red, because I did not succeed. I'll try the second one. So what's written is, Est-ce qu'il y avait des serpents et des animaux dangereux en Haïti? So I will try to answer this question. I'll click on the microphone here. And I will click here for putting my input. Oui, il y avait des serpents et des animaux dangereux. So I can stop it. No. Il n'y avait pas de serpents ni d'animaux dangereux en Haïti. Oh, they played me the model, and I can hear that mine was quite different. I can also read the model here. So I'll grade myself as having done an incorrect answer. So that's too bad for me. Next one. Est-ce qu'il y avait de l'électricité et le téléphone? Non, il n'y avait pas d'électricité et il n'y avait pas de téléphone. Il n'y avait ni électricité ni téléphone. Non, il n'y avait ni électricité ni téléphone. Okay, so I think I've got it. I'll put correct. And this is how it goes. And I got a little bell. So, thank you for watching. Okay, and I have a second template to show you, which is video. Here's a template that makes use of a little video. So you must first... Le travail de la VJ est de repérer tous les objets, de les identifier si possible, et de les rapporter à l'officier en service. Parlez-nous du travail de la VJ. Le travail, de le... le travail de la vigie consiste à identifier et rapporter, et etc. Le travail de la vigie est de repérer les objets, de les identifier si possible et de les rapporter à l'officier de service. Ok. So, this kind of uh, template I had in my mind, right? Uh, autonomous online teaching is possible. Uh, it can be divided in, in very small snippets like this or not. Uh, and now the other thing I, I have in my background is that uh, I'm uh, qualified as a high school teacher. So uh, Ontario College of Teachers, right? So I care about uh, pedagogy for the younger ones also. And Many of my students will be teachers later on. So I uh, very much know that one of the big problems we have is the anxiety of the students who fear to speak aloud in the classroom. Right? Uh, it's something that must be addressed. Uh, there are ways you can build confidence, you can, but it, it is difficult. And it's been studied, uh, and it's, a, it's growing. It's a growing trend, sadly. I think it's part with the mental health uh, situation around our campuses. So this really shows up in the second language class. Now, uh, specifically, uh, when you talk about the feedback you will give to the students in a second language class, uh, it, it becomes very difficult because, you know, I. I do not choose when the student will say bonjour with double N. 
whereas in French, this is bonjour, and there is no N at all. Now, is there a good day to tell Blondie here that bonjour sh should be uh, said differently? I think most of the days are days where, uh, when I say that, I'll transform uh, Blondie into the neighbor with the Diet Coca-Cola. And I, I don't want to transform the best student. So feedback in a classroom is something that's difficult, right? There is stress, and it's hard to have a strong feedback. It's often weak. A good one has to be diplomatic. It has to be evidence-based. Now, that means when I tell her, uh, Miss, it's not bonjour, was she aware of her N, right? I need to provide the evidence. And it's hard to accept because if you make a, a language mistake, it's probably because you do not hear it well yet. And of course, rubric oriented. O on that day, I should be talking about the things I set out to be teaching. But the N in bonjour may not have been on the day's list of, uh, of my rubric. So this is difficult, right? Now, uh, your current class time. This is not a research-based <laughs> diagram. It's just a, a representation. But you know, maybe uh, the teacher speaks for a third of the time. Maybe the student speaks in English. In my classroom, it should be French, right? For a part of the time. Maybe we listen to audio, video content. There is a silent time. So I think saying that students will speak French for a third of the time may be generous. Now, based, of that, based on that, in a high school, maybe each student gets about an hour and a half of real speech in one school year, which isn't much, which isn't much. So, OK. Lack of time for speaking. And then I was at Western, and I had been provided with Sakai tool, right? The message, the forum, the assignment, the, the whole gamut. And uh, also Wimba in those days. So that course was uh, originally invented around Wimba, which we no longer use, and VoiceThread, uh, which is uh, a tool that I will talk about later. So I have all these things in my head, right? And I'm given the contract. Make a course with the label speaking text that you've never heard about. But I have a background. And you know that is what is messy. Dealing with all of that and coming out with a solution. Yeah, so. Now I'll tell you about that course, right? What was the, the idea? Well, I'll do a flipped blended teaching. Uh, in class, we will have choral activities, right? Not singling people out. We'll speak together uh, as a chorus. It'll be group bonding. It'll be fun. And at home, there will be autonomous homework. It will be public. Whatever they do, they will share. And asynchronous, uh, meaning also that they can uh, record multiple time, which lowers the stress level. So in class, the, the workshop are around pronunciation, accent, intonation, expressivity. And I want it to feel homey, and the, hence the, the bonfire. Okay? And we will do this together. So I will show you a page from this book that I use. They buy that, and we use it only in the classroom. Uh, do you know indignation? Indignation is uh, something that's very important in the French culture. Sadly, it does not translate well into the English language. Uh, the closer that, that I can go is to be indignant about, which nobody uses, right? Uh, so I'll try to teach you the culture behind indignation, because every time the Persian people uh, go out for a protest, and you saw that a lot in the news during the last year, it's because they are indigné with something, about something. So I think, and that's my Cyrano uh, study thing, right? 
that uh, for you to walk in my shoes, you have to say it French style. Exercice 5. Trop, c'est trop. 1. Pas du tout. Pas du tout. 2. Il n'en est pas question. Il n'en est pas question. I want to hear you. Ça, jamais. Ça, jamais. 4. C'est nul. C'est trop nul. C'est nul. C'est trop nul. 5. C'est pas vrai. C'est pas vrai. Yeah, you have to stay with me longer. I would get you. So we do that. And then at home, right, they listen to a, a zillion French video things I find on YouTube and that is on the lesson pages of the Al site, uh, which are examples to uh, uh, bring inspiration, not to imitate. And they do their recording uh, on uh, OWL, but on this uh, VoiceThread app, okay? What kind of homework can that be? Well, they can uh, tell a bedtime story. They can rehearse a mock job interview. They can deliver a political speech or dub the Flintstones. You can pretend you're a tour guide around town with your iPhone and present a building, a monument, something. Try a short stand-up comic monologue. Uh, narrate a documentary. I have one uh, about polar bears that people like a lot. Or you can play a French drama character uh, like we just did with Cyrano, right? And I have others. I have a dozen of those. And then I send them personal audio feedback from the professor. And this is really the, the trick uh, how do I do that with the tools that we have so it's easy for me, convenient? Well, first of all, their uh, homework is made into VoiceThread. So VoiceThread can be a thread, sometimes it is, a forum discussion, or they can be um, alone, right, st standalone presentation by each student, depending. So this is just a clip from the VoiceThread company. Instead of texting apps, forums, or emailing, you have another option. Just grab some media, upload it, and share it. And then listen as voices are added and a conversation grows naturally over time without anyone scheduling anything. Simply put, VoiceThreading will get you back to using the most effective communications tool ever made, which will make your online meetings, presentations, or conversations more effective, but also more personal and basically more human. So this was very well integrated, also with the great book, so it's easy to use. I uh, use a rubric. This is a very elaborate one. Every line is one. You, you don't have to read it. It's in Excel. And all the little tabs are one for every homework, because they're hand-tailored to every homework. So I put the numbers for a student, copy, paste that into a message in the message tool. So now I'll show you how I deal with VoiceThread and message to uh, compose oral feedback. I work with two windows. Uh, one that currently has a voice thread that is presumably uh, the student, for the case being it's myself, and a uh, message in the message tool in Al by Sakai. So I push this, which will start the recorder, and I'll start the recorder and I can start speaking to the student. So this is my comment to the student. We will listen to you, student. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Student, for saying elle donne des oeufs. Uh, that was said with a very enthusiastic intonation. So it's within the message tool in Al by Sakai. He would get this little text that is copy pasted. This is clickable, so it will send them back into the message tool in Al. And here are my little messages where I comment on their uh, audio or video production. So. Et puis c'est aussi parce que 
vous mettez l'accent sur le U de usage, qu'un usage. Alors ça donne presque un, un mauvais genre féminin. C'est un usage de la. Ok. So they have a lot of that. And in this part, I copy paste from Excel my rubric and I push send. So that's it, just that. But it permits me to hand tailor my feedback to everyone. And uh, this way, well, uh, if I have 42 students, you know, I can create 87 hours of speech in French online. And it's quite, uh, it's easier for me to talk about it, to comment on it, to evaluate it, uh, because it's on video and I can play back, but also because it's linked to a text, most usually, there is a base. They're saying something that existed previously, somehow, either as a plan uh, or a full-fledged text. Sometimes they have to learn it by heart, de depending on each assignment. So uh, this works well. And they, they end up you know, in a 0.5 credit, uh, one term semester, talking twice as much as a grade 12 student would do in, in the whole year. So it's very efficient. Okay. Also, we have a component of oral comprehension. So I have them buy a, an audiobook uh, on iTunes, and they listen to that. And we have tests that are online, uh, that are, I'm sorry, in class uh, with a PowerPoint presentation. Everyone together, I play, they answer. Uh, so that's one thing. So it pleases them. Uh, that's why a couple of years ago, uh, Mario Lantin and I, for one uh, semester, we, we taught that together on the, on the third iteration of, of the class. We were together. And that's when we won uh, the University Student Council Award. So that's really an award that comes from the student themselves. Uh, so apparently, they, they enjoy that. So what about scaling? Is it possible with? this kind of solution. Well, do I get more students enrolled? Uh, I'm capped at 30. I can handle up to 30 by myself. So this will not be the, the thousands, right? Can I get more faculty to buy into that? Well, I think a faculty looking at this presentation could be inspired and himself or herself see how they could link their own treasure chest with all sorts of tools, right? But I'm not expecting anyone to imitate this. So more faculty can do more things from the humanities, that's the fact where I'm from, uh, could. But it has, we have to admit that it has to be a deep process. For someone to believe in it, it has to be linked to their own treasure, treasure chest. Can we generate more app use, right? More clicks, more hours of use of a tool. Uh, I think the voice thread people are quite happy with w what I'm doing at Western. Uh, I think they, they get many clicks from my institution. So more speaking time, definitely. A, a whole lot more. More online satisfaction. Well, I've been teaching online in, in different venues, different ways. And this is a blended course. But the on, online uh, component uh, has generated lots of satisfaction, not dissatisfaction. So scaling up satisfaction is not a concept we've heard about. <laughs> but we can get more of it. Now, I'd like to end on the, the buzzwords, right? Action-based, inductive, authentic, experiential, distance, blended, communicational, multicultural, flipped classroom. I did not set out to use more tools, and I did not set out to check on each of those. But in the end, I think we did. I think we did. So the way to uh, build this course was to reflect on my own person as a professor, my own background, and take the time to think of uh, one formula to, to solve the problem. 
And because of that, I'm motivated and I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much.